great to see you. Great to see you as always. Great to see you as always. And the word is, as we go to optimize the stream here, and uh, it's funny how I'm already getting the stream in the news, and you guys, and it says waiting, and it hasn't, you know, started yet. This is interesting. Yo, isn't that interesting? Then it goes. See how? See? See the delay? All right. This is very bad connection. I don't know. Any connection with Golden State Raider is a great one. How you doing, Golden State Raider? Yo. Yeah, hear me talk about the delay. <laughs> How about that? I have got to go to the control room and uh, see how the stream is. This is bad. Okay, I'm going to fix that in a second. All right. This is bad. Bad stream. Bad stream. We're going to fix that bad stream. Bad stream. But you know what? It says very bad connection. Why that is, I do not know. But I'll tell you one thing. Got to go to monetization. Hit the save settings. Settings are saved. Go down here, waiting, waiting, waiting. Come on. All changes saved. Yep. Batteries to power. Turbines to speed. You on the watch page. And let's go. We are there. How you doing? Hello. Golden State Raider? What say you? What's on your mind today? I know what's on mine. I'm waiting for Rick Ross to chime in because he always says that Joe Flacco, he always asks the question, is a Joe Flacco an elite quarterback? I'm going to make the statement that Joe Flacco will be an elite quarterback if the Ravens go according to rumor and sign Eric Decker to join Jeremy Macklin, who signed a two-year, $11 million deal with the Ravens yesterday. Now, hey, Octavio, how are you? Awesome. I don't have a... I, you see me. Uh, actually, Golden State Raider, I don't know what you're talking about, but the bottom line is... Um, hey, the bottom line is... Oh, and by the way, I do, but the whole point is... What say you all? How about it? Eric Decker... Eric Decker... Joining, I'm writing this down in text, folks. Joining Jeremy Macklin. Macklin. But hey, Golden State Raiders, so are the Raiders this year. The Raiders are supposed to install that vertical passing game that some people say that they want so much. And if I speak derisively about the idea, it's because I think it's simplistic, okay? Getting the game yards downfield is a more complicated affair than just throwing deep. There are other ways to do it that don't involve throwing deep. Now, why do you keep? Why do you ask? That why you ask? I say throwing deep. It's because I'm thinking of this movie with uh, no Derek Decker did not yet join the Ravens. The story according to my friend Jason Lockin of CBS Sports, is that Decker may sign, but has not signed with the same Ravens that just acquired Jeremy Macklin for two years and 11 million. All right? That's the whole idea. That's, that's the news. To which I thought, whoa! That's almost the Bucks version. Excuse me, that's almost the Ravens version with the Bucks have done. They have Mike Evans and Deshaun Jackson, but for good measure, they, are, they added that great, 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 great stable of the tight end O.J. Howard out of Alabama uh, to join uh, as their the team. And of course, the, the great great uh, Penn State wide receiver that was picked up by the Bucks in the third round of this year's draft and that's Chris Godwin. Chris Godwin gained raves reviews in the first week of OTAs for the Bucks, right? Everybody is chasing that combination. Remember the Raiders had Cooper Last year, you know, Mari Cooper uh, and 
Michael Crabtree, and now we've got Corderell Patterson and Michael Crabtree and Cooper. Everybody's got their passing game group. It used to be a tandem, like Branch and Blitnikoff. It's not just it's not a tandem now, it's a threesome. <laughs> to which the Raiders the Raiders have their arguably their threesome. And the Ravens are trying to build one and the Bucks have one. Arguably they have a foursome. Just saying. So fun to watch. Hey Ruben, how you doing? Octavio says we need more speed in order to move the vertical game. That's right. And we have Octavio says I think Hood would alternate with Lynch and run the ball hard. And it's not a glass of warm milk. No, it's uh, what this is, is a curious mixture of a couple of, actually three different drinks um, that are energy drinks, you know, for the most part. But it's pretty good, you know. It's uh, one part Gatorade, you know, one part uh, some milk energy drink that was downstairs that, you know, I, I happened to see and forgot the name of. And the other part, uh, a little bit of Powerade. So you've got the AIDS working. Okay, there you go. John Marks. Everybody's singing, Sunshine Day. Hey, I got that down. Everybody's laughing, Sunshine Day. I got that. Think I'll go for a walk outside now. The summer sun's calling my name. Hey, I'm getting that. That is a complicated song to sing. And no, I'm not going to sing it for the rest of your arrival here. Come on in. It is a nighttime sunshine day. I'm only practicing that because John Marks is egging me on. Joseph Jones, how are you? How you doing? To which he has me saying, I think I'm going for a walk outside now. The summer sun's coming my way. Everybody's laughing. Sunshine day. Especially the day after the Warriors won the 2017 NBA Finals. Still amazing when Oakland was off the hook last night. I wasn't there, but I did blog about it. Some viewers were there. Some people that may be turning in now. Patrick M. Butte Blackman, where the heck have you been? Welcome. How are you doing? How are you? I have another announcement, folks, for those of you who are chiming in early. My guest tomorrow, 8.30 Pacific, 11.30 Eastern, will be none other than Godfather Grizz. That's right. Grizz Jones will return to the Zinster flock, grace our presence with his knowledge and involvement in the Raiders' quest, Raider fans' quest to retain the Raiders in Oakland, having hired an excellent group of attorneys to get the ball rolling. So tomorrow, Godfather Grizz, right here at Zenny 62, and then the next day, remember, 5 o'clock Eastern, 2 o'clock Pacific, couldn't arrange anything better, but hey, Lee Steinberg, the sports agent of Patrick Holmes, 10th pick of the NFL Draft first round, and Paxton Lynch will join us. It's a great week. Spread the word and tune on in. But I digress. Back to the point. Patrick has been working. And Joseph Jones says that he saw, I wrote, I made a post on the mayor's speech, and I said that they should keep their speeches short. I was being polite. Joseph Jones says none of them should speak. Joseph, were you at the celebration two years ago? Remember that? Oh, what a disaster. Rick Rice is here. Rick Rice is Joe Flacco, an elite quarterback. I came up with that title with you in mind, my friend. <laughs> you. Golden State Raider says, Zinni, are you respected by high-end officials and AP? I don't know. Why do you ask questions like that? I mean, why do I keep I me? Mean, what do you mean? That's weird, man. Because, for one, look, I'm just being, I'm just going to say this straight out. First of all, Golden State Reader, I don't know your real name, all right? You ask me when I'm going to be somewhere. You ask, you make pointed personal conversations. I know you mean well, but I'm saying that, add it up, it's like, what? what's up with that, you know? My point is that I, I don't know what's in the back there that's that's producing this, but I respect myself, okay? I respect myself. And in my life, 
which is 54 years. I hope to see 55. And, and I hope I continue looking as good as I think that I look. And yes, I'm narcissistic. For the rest of my life, I will tell you this, all right? That, that, look, I don't care. Respect comes from within. I, I think, I don't know how old you are, but, or maybe I've forgotten. I think you said you're 21, right? But respect comes from within. If you don't respect yourself, if you don't have confidence in yourself, you will not bring confidence to anybody else. And I'm not saying, oh yeah, I think I'm a big man or anything. No. Everybody knows when their confidence is necessary to shine. In other words, you're in a boardroom, you're in a meeting, you know something better than someone else, fine, you say so. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. I'm confident enough in what I know. I'm not talking to you here about, for example, string theory. I am familiar with string theory, but I'm by no means an expert at string theory, okay? Just not. I know system dynamics very well. I'm an expert in that. I'm very confident in what I know with respect to system dynamics, all right? But even then, there are ways that system dynamics can be used with certain mathematics techniques that I don't know. And I'll tell you that. That's what I'm doing now. You get the picture? We're all experts at something, but when you are an expert at something, know it, feel it, be it. That's all I'm saying. You the man, Rick Rice. Haas, you the man. <laughs> so anyway, onward. John Mark says, Jeff Haas at a QB. Um, oh, Raider Cat says that the only ring that Joe Flacco has is off Ray Lewis back. And John Mark says Jeff Hostetler went down with a separated shoulder at the Coliseum during the Raiders versus Dallas in 95. He did. That's true. Tanner Adams. How are you? Tanner said he made a statement. He didn't ask a question. I don't. Are you talking about Jeff Sessions? I don't know. Um, at any rate, Rick Rice says if Joe Flacco is elite, then Trent Dilfer, Dilfer is elite. And Rick Rice, guess what? Trent Dilfer is an elite quarterback. He improved his game to that point. You know, he had a better offensive coordinator than he did when he was with the Bucks. Now, John Mark says, Brady kids, we can make the world a whole lot brighter with Oakland. <laughs> Donis, how are you? John Mark says, uh, go to St. says, okay, Zinni, I gave you a compliment, but you take it wrong, my bad. No, I, it's, you have to remember, this is text, okay? And I... That's the way I reacted. I reacted to text in a certain way. It was kind of like, you know, what do you mean? That is, that's not a bad thing. That's just, I'm just being honest, okay? Uh, but the, the way you asked the question was, it was, I mean, instead of saying, instead of saying that, just say, eh, it's a stupid conversation. Onward. Donus, how you doing? Lazy, how you doing? Rick Rice. Donus, you did not tell me. Oh, Rick Rice, I did say that Trent Dilfer was an elite quarterback. You know why? He has a ring. Tell me why Trent Dilfer is not an elite quarterback. Joe Flacco has a ring. <laughs> Shout out. That's right. That's right. I said that. And the minute I said that Joe Flacco was elite, two people have said, screw it, I'm done here. So much the better. Mm. I love it. Tanner, don't worry about it. I mean, this is, I mean, you're worried about small stuff. You haven't answered my question. Okay, the question of the day is, will Eric Decker and Jeremy Macklin make Joe Flacco a truly elite quarterback? I say yes. What say you? Rick Ross is questioning me. I don't know. Okay. Haas is boss. Yes. Have you tweeted this out? Yes. Rick, Rick says, I agree. Dilfer is one of the greatest of all time. But, right, he didn't have the weapons of the coach. And thanks. Bye, Golden State Reader. Okay. So anyway, um, he didn't have the weapons or the coach, okay? And so here's the thing. Uh, you've got, I remember when Dilfer was with the Bucks, and he had, I believe it was Clyde, Clyde Christensen as offensive coordinator, and Christensen was just getting his C-Legs. 
But later, um, Christian was just getting a C lecture, you know what I mean? And because of that, and because of the fact that Tony Dungy was an excellent defensive coordinator and coach, but not the greatest defensive, offensive guy, excuse me, you know, we got in the Bucks what we got. Now, and so, what? Well, yeah, Joe says it's elite. No. Hey, Donis says he was there. Now, uh, Octavio says that Dilfer got his ring off the backs of the Raiders and Gruden knowing everything that the Raiders were doing. Yeah, because Al Davis sent him to over to the Bucks. He did. And so, and uh, John Mark says it was Brad Johnson who QB'd the Bucks. Uh, so that's why it was Brad Johnson. Right, but see, I was thinking John Marks in years past. You're thinking about Brad Johnson when Dungy left, but remember, Dilfer was with the Bucks before that, okay? And then he was traded to the Ravens, if I'm not mistaken. It's a trader. It was a. It was a trade to the Ravens. Uh, no, free agency to the Ravens, yeah. And then he, he got, he led the Ravens in 2000 to their Super Bowl win over the uh, the New York Giants. I believe it was the New York Giants, right? So, yes, it was the New York Giants. Patrick M. Blackman, thank you so much. This is, thank you very much, very much. Thank you for the $2 donation, to which I will have... Well, thank you, Rick Rice. I will have a sheet starting an alternative, different kind of investment system, and I will introduce it Thursday night. So, yeah, I'll be ready. Now, Octavius said Callahan sold us out. He did, didn't he? He certainly did. He really did. Callahan did sell us, sell them out. He really did. Now, that remember. Wasn't that when he during the time when he called his offensive line stupid, or basically his entire set of players stupid, right? Uh, I'm tech, I'm putting this out on Twitter. I haven't done that. Uh, hey, where's Barry Lee when you need him? I hope Barry's okay. Uh, I hope Barry is okay. John Mark says, "Oh, Rick Rice says I'm an elite broadcaster. Thank you. I try." John Marks says Trent Dilfer was a QB on Ravens versus Raiders AFC title game at Coliseum. Right. He was with the Ravens. But prior to that, he was with the Bucks. Um, Steve Collins said, we've got to be the dumbest football team in history. Right. That's what he said. How you doing, Steve? Buchanan says, Zinni, do you think the stadium in Mission Bay will have the, vi the same vibe as that vibe as Oracle? That, I know that they're trying to design that in. And um, I know that they're trying to design that in. And uh, Octavio says, ask Tim Brown and Jerry Rice. <laughs> Good one, Octavio. Hey, uh, by the way, you can ask me. I was at that Super Bowl. Oh, oh my God. I remember that was awful. That was worth, that's worth like, ugh, going, oh, 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 that was awful. I remember, I got to get him on the show too. I remember me and Charlie Santana Jr., uh, if you don't know who Charlie Santana Jr. is, he's a unique, kind, great, spiritually giant man whose father, Charlie Santana Sr., was a great Alameda County supervisor who led the effort to bring the Raiders back to Oakland from Los Angeles. So when you go to the Coliseum, you come out of the West Side Club, you come out of the West Side Club, it's on this side. Okay, you look up, you see this plaque of people. It's called the Base Sports Hall of Fame. Actually, it's not on that side. It's the other side. You go to the other side, okay? As you go out the West Side Club on the other side, like you're headed toward um, the box number nine, the loge boxes on up here. If you keep going around, you keep going, you'll get to the east side this way. If you look on this, and you look on over this way, Again, on your right, you'll see a giant mural of a guy. That's Charlie Santana Jr. Okay, he is senior. Excuse me. He is Charlie Tan San, Tan, Charlie Santana Senior, kind of like Sunshine. Yes, 
was the Alameda County Board of Supervisor that helped bring the Raiders back to Oakland from Los Angeles. Charlie Santana Jr. is his son, my good friend. Now, um, are there any relation to Carlos Santana? You know, I don't know. I never asked that question. It's a good question to so ask John Marks. Um, and Donut says, that was a dumb mistake for Davis to trade Gruden to the Bucks. Yeah, it wasn't smart. Uh, Henry Flores says, Zinni, this was on ESPN. U.S. Senators aiming to stop use of municipal funds for stadiums. Yeah, I got a call about that. And uh, I got a call about that. And uh, I think that's a quite interesting news. My reaction when I received the call was that if the bill isn't retroactive, it doesn't do us any good, right? In other words, if, if the bill, which I haven't seen, I've only been informed about it this night, if the bill does not include something that says this action is retroactive over the past two years, what good does it do us, right? Just saying. But uh, I'm just saying, probably none. So, how many people here are going to the Warriors celebration on Thursday? I'll be out. Of, I'll be here. Just curious, how many will be going? By a show of hands, or or emojis. How's that? Or emoji hands. How about that? Emoji hands. <laughs> emoji hands. And Henry Flores says, "Zinny, they said it's bad. Senator Bill." was passed in 2015. Um, it passed one house, but it didn't pass the Senate. I remember that bill. And somehow it did, because if it passed, it would have had an impact on the bond issues of today, and it didn't. So John Marks is in Kelso, Washington. He says he can't be there. Uh, let's see here. But let me look that up. Or, or Henry, I'm doing this. Look it up, and if you see something... Holler, you know, shout out, say, hey, I see something. Give us a holler. Give us a holler. So, um, so if you see it, Henry, I'll say, Henry, 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 if you see, if you see it, let us know. In fact, you know what? Let me go on and, let me go and try and find it myself. One moment here. I am going to go and uh, do a little search here, see if I can dig up the, that piece of information myself and share it for discussion, right? Share it for discussion. But Eric Decker, do you think that Eric Decker going to the Jeremy Macklin equipped Baltimore Ravens makes Joe Flacco an elite quarterback? I do. I do. Of course, I always thought that Joe Flacco was a league quarterback already. So, right? So what can I say? So we got, yeah, that's what I say. And then Octavio says that he'll, he'll go to the Raiders Celebration Open Championship. Octavio Arias says no. And, uh, and I, which I say, Oh, is anyone going to live stream it? <laughs> I'll be there. I'll be cyber there. I'll be cyber there. But here's the thing. It's getting back to my point regarding uh, this deal, this bill, this idea. Uh, I believe that... I think they'll... I think that... As someone said to me last night, actually Boxman said when he called me, he said that they keep trying and someone will sign one. But my thought is, you know, floating these is one thing, but to be honest, it's kind of like, eh, because there's so many stadiums that have been completed that, and with the involvement of public funds, my thought is, well, what difference is it going to make? You've got pretty much the, the, sec, the second generation yeah, you got pretty much the second generation of um, of stadiums in terms of a list almost completely built, right? There are few markets that need new stadiums. We, we know them. Oakland, San Diego, and Buffalo, okay? So we know what those markets are. We know them, all right? 
So um, we know what they are. But I think that the treasures does this have a chance to pass. I have to see it. Let me look at it. Let me go back and look at it and see if I can find it. And I'll do that right now. Let's see here. We've got Oakland. NF, let's see. How about this? Public funds. Public funding stadiums. And we'll see what we've got. And let's see here. We go to news. Senators aim to stop use of municipal funds to finance stadium ESPN 17 hours ago. Then there's another one. This is by my longtime friend Darren Ravel. Tried to get Darren Ravel to consider working with for me at Sports Business Simulations when I thought I was going to get a good gob of money. Didn't happen. Still friends. Darren Ravel has emerged to be one of the best sports business writers in the business. Senior writer. Darren Ravel writes a group of politicians who are tired of taxpayer money being used to build sports stadiums on Tuesday, we're going to introduce a bill in the Senate to prohibit the practice. Cory Booker, you know who Cory is. I do. I don't, I don't know him. I haven't met him. Been in the same room, but haven't met him. It was a big room. It was the 2012 Democratic National Convention. A big room. And James Lankford, Republican of Ohio, not his first go around with this, are sponsoring a bill that will prohibit teams from using municipal bonds whose interest is exempt from federal taxes to help finance stadium construction. Now, and they talked about the report. I'm trying to find out where this bill is. And yeah, and it says here, a similar bill was introduced by Congressman Steve, Ru Stephen, Steve Russell, Republican of Oklahoma, into the House of Representatives in March of 2016. But I don't remember that thing ever getting out of committee. Okay, so yeah, there you go. Now, yeah, I think that's what happened. So it never really got out of, uh, it really never got out of committee. Oh, let me see what's going on here. I'm able to chat and uh, four to one. Oh, by the way, Barry Strong is here. Barry's here. Barry Strong. Barry Lee is in the house. Barry Lee is in the house. Barry, how are you doing? How are you doing, Barry? Barry Lee is in the house. I had to refresh. Hey, Barry. Jacksonville. Barry, how are you? I, I missed all of these. You know, I had to refresh my screens. I was missing all of these comments here. I thought something is wrong. Why is that? All right. FTX168 says, I don't think that the senators are that serious about stopping the NFL from what I call municipal welfare. Otherwise, change the status from nonprofit to for profit. Okay, I agree with you because they had the chance before and they didn't do it. John Mark says Oakland Raiders 2017 Super Bowl 52 champions. Maybe, but maybe the Ravens have something to say about that. <laughs> I'm playing games. I think they have a great chance of it. Barry, how are you feeling? Let me go down and find out. You say he, Barry says he's getting a lot better. Um. Very strong. Very strong. Hey, Barry, are you on a particular diet or uh, for your recovery? I mean, do you have any tips for us, you know, who might be going through the same thing at any point in our lives or now? Maybe if someone's watching but, you know, doesn't want to say so. Um, what say you? Do you have a special diet? Just curious. If you don't, for those of you who don't know, Barry Lee is one of our participants. He wears the shirt. He has become a major... Micro shareholder, a new term I created. Micro angel investor. Uh, Fred, as as uh, Patrick for the two dollar donation. You, two dollar donations. You are micro angel investors, and he has the shirt and he's got the Twitter account with the Zenny sixty two shirt, wearing it. He he wears the image, and so and so Barry says that and. Barry says, my, my tip is to stop eating so much darn pizza. <laughs> what kind of pizza do you like? Steve Collins says, we all know when Barry is good, he will start blocking people. <laughs> Ruben Ortiz says, hey Zinni, why is it that so many fans are okay with the Raiders going to Vegas? I don't know that they are, Ruben. Uh, I don't think that if you're going by social media or Twitter, that's a bad thing. Uh, 
I would say that in, that it's more complicated than what you say. However, there are still people who have multiple accounts who push an agenda to this day. Having said that, there is also what I call the modern phenomena of the giant institutional foot. In this case, the giant institutional foot happens to be that of the National Football League. And the perception is that foot is going to step on me. What can I do to stop it? Besides, I like the NFL, and so I can do nothing about it. Until you get a grassroots movement that has even an inkling of an image that's going to do well. Ours is more than that. The bottom line is that we live in a society where people now more than ever feel so powerless to do anything that protesting has become the new brunch. Now you would say that doesn't make any sense. Bear with me. My point is that that and Barry said, yeah, Barry, you haven't blocked in a while. My point is that um, we have an issue where hold on a second, I'm just checking the fine here with a stream. Oh yeah, there we go. I left, yeah, Barry left in good shape. All right. My point is that, is that people feel powerless and like the NFL. So they're going to say that. And it's always, what can I do? Look at the number of comments. What can I do? I can do nothing about it. I love to see the Raiders stay, but I can do nothing about it. That's what you're hearing. It's not so much the down for it, but they feel, what can I do? I'm just a little person. And I hear that a lot. That's what you're saying. Does that make sense, Ruben? Did that answer your first question? Harry Flores says, I am not okay with the Raiders leaving for Vegas. There you go. Octavio likes pepperoni, so do I. I like deep dish, man. Octavio, Harry Flores also says, the Oakland Raiders were born in Oakland, and they were. Barry Lee says, well, I said that about his not blocking people. Steve Collins says, I think Couch and Logo fans want Vegas. Barry Lee says, uh, he's going to move to Colorado. I said that a second ago. Steve Collins says, you left it in good shape, Barry Lee. John Mark says, I am not okay with the Raiders leaving Oakland again, and I am not either. So, Ruben, Ruben, where'd you get the idea? Hello, Ruben. Ruben, where'd you get that idea? <laughs> oh, Ruben, hold on a second. I am, uh, there we go. All right. Okay. Where'd you get that idea? Oh, I made perfect sense. Thank you. Now, Ruben says that you can do something. You can go support the GoFundMe account. Hey, Ruben, can you put the link to that up? I'm going to actually I talk to Ray Bobbitt. I'm going to make a special website that will be up tomorrow. A go-to place for consistently updated information about the effort. You can donate right there. The, the GoFundMe account link will be prominently displayed at the top so yeah now and yeah so Ruben is right Steve Collins says Oakland Raiders Rick Rice says they should ask the players if they'd rather stay in Oakland or move to Vegas take a blind vote I bet 80% would stay in Oakland New York style pizza is elite Ruben Ortiz says yes you made perfect sense thank you Patrick M Blackman the situation is much more intense than Art Modell situation where he left Cleveland, although Cleveland had have a longer history. John Mark says, I had a GoFundMe set up for the Oakland Raiders stadium idea. Ah, okay. That was you. I remember that. Barry Lee says, hey, I just realized that at least when I moved to Colorado, I can drive to NFL games this year. John Mark says, don't ask Garrett Carr about the move. Laugh out loud. Hey, I've got to get something off my chest, and it's something that Golden State Raider did I don't appreciate. I took the time to make him a moderator, but in spite of that, he asks questions that I, I feel exact a level of insecurity that I don't want reflected on a moderator. What I mean by that is this, that it's almost like a borderline hater, like, hey, Zinni, do you think that people respect you? Hey, Z you know, it's like, I don't want someone that's supposed to represent this brand, if you will, out there basically throwing spitballs at me. He says he doesn't mean to, but he's done it before. 
or he'll say I should use this or I should it's always something that's wrong and am I I don't feel that I'm wrong for having an issue about it but I'm talking about it openly because I'm saying to other moderators you know like Barry Lee is great you know he is a fan I'm a fan of him I'm a fan of John Marks. You know, you all are fans. My, I mean, but my, I feel that for some reason he's taken a, a wrong turn. I don't know what happened there, but it's making me uncomfortable. I'm thinking maybe I shouldn't have him as a moderator. Am I right or am I wrong? I want to hear, I'm bringing this to the group for a discussion. What do you say? All right. Emil Scott says, I feel you. Yeah. I mean, it's like. I mean, you know, it was really a weird question. Zinni, do, do they respect you? Do they respect you? Well, what kind of question is that? And he says, well, I respect you. Well, I don't care. You know, but he's my point is he's done that before and I've ignored it. And I've reached the point where I'm thinking, you know, something's really wrong here. And then he goes, okay, I'm out. That's not what a moderator does. That's what a hater does. All right? That's my issue. Okay? So, all right. So Mark, John Mark says, what do you have, so what do you have to do? I support you, Zinni. Talk to him directly. I, hey, I will. He's not here, okay? Um, Henry Flores says, Zinni, he is splitting. He split, Henry. He said he was out of there, but the whole point is that his being out of there is one thing, but he is still a moderator, okay? We're talking about uh, Golden State Raider, all right? And he's been great. He's always the first, but... You know, part of it is I think you maybe, uh, I know it's my channel, but I want to be fair and I don't want to be, you know, there's a reason why it's called dick tutorial. I don't want to be that way. You understand? That's ridiculous. There's that word too, if you think about it. So, all right. So I, I just don't want to be that person. I just don't. Because... It, it just doesn't make me feel good at the end of the day. I'm supposed to end this by feeling good. You know, I'm talking about sports and around personalities I enjoy and that sort of thing. That's what I'm talking about. And I just felt that he was off base. I just really felt he was off base. And then, you know, and I, what I didn't appreciate about what Tanner was doing is he was taking up for it and starting this, this low-level conversation over nothing. Okay. And he didn't need to do that. And I don't like people who get into issues like that. That's not mature. And I don't appreciate that when I'm entrusted somebody to be a moderator. It's like he forgot. So yeah, I have an issue with that. Right. Okay. Okay, I'll make the call. I'm going to, until further notice, I'm going to, I don't know if it's possible to de-moderate a person, but I feel that until further notice, I'm going to do that. And... And I'm going, to re I'm going to do that because his, his behavior was a little bizarre. And then on top of that, it's always, so when are you coming back to Oakland? Well, why? I mean, in other words, he wants, like, dates and all this. Why? Or, you know, I mean, because I'm not, you know, I don't know this person. I don't know who this person really is. I don't know where he lives. I don't know anything about him that would make me, give me comfort with what he asks and puts out. And it's 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 just not it's just, just happened again and again and again and after a while and I'm calling it out just basically because I don't know this person. Alright? And I always and, and, and there's an old saying, if you think if your intuition, if your first impression is to uh, you know lead you to suspect of something, then you should go with that impression, alright? So, okay, so as of now, Golden State Raider is no longer a moderator. So there we go. And and T Tanner says, uh, you know, I never meant to stand up for him. I was just trying to help clarify. Uh, out. No, Tanner, you went out of what I apologize. And, you know, just in, you know, in, in hindsight's always 20, 2020, and I appreciate your efforts. What I'm, what I'm talking about is the raison d'etre, what gave rise to them. And it's happened before, and it's these little things. And again, this is, it's like, I, there's something, statements that he writes and makes, I just kind of overlook or pass over. Or if something goes wrong, he'll consistently point it out. I'm thinking, this guy is a moderator, right? It's like, I know things, you know, it's, it's after, it just hit me to where I'm thinking, all right, this is like the, the 15th time. That's a lot. 
But yeah, I pay attention. That's a lot. If if you call me to be a moderator on your channel, that's a special designation. I'm not going to use that designation to imply that. Oh, hey, you know, I'm going to. I'm not going to ask you. Let's say. Um, let's say anybody. Let's say. Let's say Tanner. Let's say I say to you, Hey, do you think that? Uh, do you think the girls think you're cute? I mean, that, that's kind of like that, that. That's the kind of question that is. It's like, huh? I mean, it's like really left field. It's like, what? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, you would expect somebody to ask that who's just a, a common viewer who just wants to like screw with you, right? That's what I'm saying. That, that's all I'm saying, right? It's a matter of, hey, if you really like and enjoy what a person's doing, it, it comes through in what you type to them. You know, that's what I'm getting at. So um, Octavio is right. Octavio says we need to do the round table and get to know each other. Octavio. True words have never been spoken. I think that's absolutely right. Henry Ford says, splitting is a failure in a person's thinking to bring together the dichotomy of both positive and negative qualities of self and others into a cohesive, realistic, whole, common defense mechanism. Henry Ford is spoken like a true relationship counselor. Did I get that right? I think I'm right. I think I got that right. And uh, Octavio said it best. And, and Barry Lee says, Zinni, I hope you had a great day today, sir. And I very I did actually. Well, you know, it was that was yeah, I did, you know. But the bottom line is that uh, as Octavio said it, texts are misleading. And that's why it's important. And Henry Flores says I, I prefer therapists. Right. And see, I would have not had an issue with what Golden State Raider did had he not checked out when he says, Okay, I'm out of here. It's like okay. Wow, because I may, I did I didn't quite understand his message or what he's trying to do. But again, it's a pattern. It is a pattern. There is there was something out there that just more than once has given me the willies. That's all I'm saying. So yeah, that's all I'm saying. And so um, and Joseph Jones says you have all respect, Zinni. That's why I made uh made, I said make the call. Oh yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. And. You know, again, it's, it's as I said to Golden State Raider, I respect myself. and But what I don't want, okay, here is, at the end of the day, it's not respect. Let me explain to you where I'm coming from that would, uh, you know, kind of round things out, all right? Um, and that it is that. And where I'm coming from is that when you are in a medium like this, sorry, the air conditioner came on. When you're in a medium like this, you want to know. You want to know people, and you want to feel like they've got your back. It's not. It's res, it's not respect. It's safety. The respect comes is, is that gently related to that, right? But when someone does that, and I'm, I don't feel, I don't feel safe. I hope that makes sense, okay? I hope that makes sense, all right? Right, that's all I'm saying, yeah. Henry Flores, are you a pirate therapist? How about, are you, do you work with, do you work with pirates? <laughs> like raiders? I'm just curious. Now, now back to Patrick and Blackman says, you are what you repeatedly do. Yeah, that's absolutely right. That's absolutely right. And so now I can go back to talking about Joe Flacco, having gotten that out of my system, and, um, whether or not Joe Flacco is an elite quarterback, to which uh, I want to show you something. This is Joe Flacco as an elite quarterback. Hold on a second. <laughs> Hold on a second. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Sorry, sorry, folks. <laughs> Hold on a second. I just want to show you something. It is here. Joe Flacco passing, passing. Joe Flacco, there, there it is. This is what I want to show you. Stats. There it is. More stats. This is what I want to show you. This is Joe Flacco. All 
All right. Career stats from 2008 all the way to 2016. His rating has always been in the 80s. It got better. Super Bowl year, right? 73. Okay, look at that. Yards, career yards, 32,639 career yards. Touchdowns. Now, the touchdowns, he's never really set the world on fire. He has never had a year where he has been in the high touchdown category, like 30 or more. All right? Interceptions, he has had... He started off with almost as many interceptions as touchdowns. He got better, got better, you know, and then look at that, 22 interceptions, 19 touchdowns. That was 2013. Then he got better the next year when they brought on Jim Caldwell. And then look at that. Okay, so from that perspective, you know what? We can say that Joe Flacco is not yet. If you look at it from the perspective of touchdowns, Joe Flacco's got some work to do. So from that perspective, all right, you could say from that perspective he was lucky to get his ring, right? Just saying, maybe, all right. As Octavio Arias says, that's not elite. No, Octavio, that's not elite. And maybe he's so not going to revisit that. And John Mark says Rich Gannon was better than Joe Flacco, right? And you want to know what Rich Gannon's stat is? Okay, I'll get that right now. Rich Gannon. Let's take a look. Rich Gannon. Rich Gannon career stats. Found it. Wow. Rich Gannon had a... Right. Let's see here. Here we go. 19 Rich Gannon stats. Boy, what a long list. Here's Rich Gannon stats. Alright. This is Rich Gannon, all right? Have uh, 87 Minnesota rating. All right, let's go down. He's had touchdowns to interception ratio. Let's see what his total career stats are. Career. He has right there. 28,743 yards there. And he's had, let's see here, 180 touchdowns, okay? And he's had uh, 104 interceptions. His career rating is, boom, 84.7. And he's, he's had a 97 career rating in 2002 with a big year, 95, 92. In those years he had, let's see here, he had uh, 26 touchdowns that year. You know, excuse me, 20, yeah, 26 touchdowns, 10 interceptions, 28-11. So even Rich Gannon, if you take a look at it, Rich Gannon really has, he hasn't had that much better of a set of seasons than Joe Flacco. But he's had better seasons. Okay. His passer rating was great. It was better. Okay. And we're not talking about the Peyton Manning level, right? Right? So, Octavio says, yeah, you know, Tanner says those are not elite numbers, and I also don't think he passes the eye test. And Tanner, I'm starting to agree with you. Okay? I'm starting to agree with you. Where's Rick Rice when you meet him? Uh, Octavio says, again, that's not elite. Patrick Buchanan says, he, he may be a glorified game manager that throws the ball better than the average game manager. But the question is, who is the average game manager? Now, Octavio also says that Gannon's a game manager. Barry Lee says, I think you can't count a QB, an elite QB, by Super Bowl rings alone. Uncle, I get it. I get it. But it's worth conversation because you can always say he's got a ring. Right? And more often than not, well, you know what? Here's the thing. I'm not going to entirely uncle. I will, my argument with respect to Dilfer is that Dilfer was a great game manager. All right? 
he was good enough to help to not get them. Brand Cliff Johnson, same thing. They were good enough to get their teams to Super Bowl without getting them into too much trouble. Alex Smith is a great game manager. Steve Collins says Gannon really only performed well on the Raiders, and that's true. The numbers, the stats prove it. Uh, he had the right offense. And Henry Flores says the base, the best game manager was Phil Simms. I agree. Well, you know what, Henry? I think the best game manager was Peyton Manning. I really do. Octavia throws in Marino. And don't forget Joe Montana. And don't forget Ken Stabler. The Raiders. The greatness of the Raiders. And Rick Rice says, the question is, what is your def definition of elite? And Mario, elite, no rings. My definition of elite is a quarterback that a quarterback that, when he enters the game, makes his team win. Okay? Now, I know you would say, all right, does that win how? But my, but my, my definition is so broad that it encompasses the quarterback that may not be the high touchdown passer. It encompasses the quarterback that may occasionally throw too many interceptions. But... They're the great game manager. That's my definition. All right. Plunkett has two wings, as Octavia points out. Patrick says Johnny Unitas, Joe Namath, okay, in his younger years. Joe Willie Namath, great game manager. How about for game managers? We're talking about people who are great game managers. Remember uh, Brian Sype for the Cleveland Browns? John Marks? That goes back. Brian Sight. How about Brian Sight? How about Bernie Kosar? Right? Ken Staber's better than Flacco, says John Marks. Bart Starr, the ultimate game manager and system guy. Octavio says Joe Mamis was a bust. Hmm, Super Bowl three. He got a ring. I know what you're saying, Barry Lee, but he got a ring. He got a ring. Henry Flores says Mark Rippon. Great answer. Octavio Arias, Octavio Arias agrees that Bernie Kosar was elite. Barry Lee says, I agree with Zinni, an elite quarterback is someone who makes their team win. And I would also add someone who is a good example off the field also. Yes, absolutely. Hey, Matt Ryan with the Falcons is a great game manager and a great quarterback. MVP material, right? Jack Kemp, as Donis points out. Jack Kemp is another one. Red right 88. That's right. Vinny Testaverde. Vinny Testosterone. I say, we used to do this. Vinny Testosterone. <laughs> now, Steve Collins says, I can't believe Broadway Joe is in the hall. Look at the stats, Zenny. And Donna says, uh, I got the Jack Kemp part. Patrick says, you have quarterbacks you play, you pay to go win for you. And quarterbacks that manage games. In other words, don't mess up and let the defense win it for you. Right. Lynn Dawson, great Kansas City Chief player, gave the Raiders fits. Daryl LaMonica, the mad bomber, whose number was three. Octavio Harris says Vinny was elite. Vinny was definitely elite. I'm surprised no one agreed with me regarding Brian Sight. Anyone remember Brian Sight from the Cleveland Browns? Remember the drive? Brian Sight was on the other end of the drive. Remember that? He went back to when the Browns could almost get it done. They were close. Remember that? Octavia Harris says, who? Octavia, you never heard of Brian Sight. All right. John Mark says, Brian Sight was with the New Jersey Generals of the USFL. He played with Herschel Walker. Octavia Harris says, that was Kosar. Uh, and let's look up, let's, let's, let's settle this. Let's look up Brian Sight. Brian Sight. Brian Sight. I'm just going to read what I find here rather than, you know, taking on a camera ride and getting everything out of sorts, all right? You know, Brian Sight is 67 years old now. Brian Sight was born August 8th, 1949, six foot one. He is... Stats according to ProFootballReference.com. 
over his career, he has a quarterback, they didn't list the rating here, but Pro Football Reference needs to do better. Boo, Pro Football Reference. Let's go to NFL.com. We are at NFL.com. Brian Seip played from 1983 to 1974 to 1983 with the Browns. His quarterback rating was... It started off, get this folks, at a dismal 47, you heard me, 47, in 1974, 75 it went to 54, I'm, I'm, I just can't believe these numbers are so low, but it just shows you how the passing game has changed, then in 76 he was at 77, then at 77 he was 61, then 60, 60.7 in 78. 79, Brian Seif was at 73.4. And then he was at a whopping, get this, 91.4 in, in 1980. The year that the passing game was liberalized. So the year the passing game was liberalized, 1980, Brian Seif posted a 90. Point. Wow, this is unbelievable. 91.4 passer rating. He went from 73.4 to 91.4 in the space of a season with the liberalized rules and the new passing. He then went down to his normal 68.2. <laughs> Once they caught up to him, he was back to being old, good old Brian Sight. Then he went down to 60.7. Then he went up to 79.1. That was his last year. That was 1983 Cleveland Browns. Wow. Brian Seip had, he, he never threw greater than, he had 30 touchdowns in that great year. He threw for more touchdowns than Joe Flacco has that one year. Okay. Uh, the, the year the liberalized rules when no one quite knew what they were going to do. Interceptions? Wow. Interception. You ever heard when Frank Sinatra says regrets? I've had a few. Well, Brian Seip, would say, if we were to play around with that song, Interceptions, I've not had a few. He had, let's see here, Interceptions. He had uh, seven his first year, three his second year, did 14, 14, 15, 26 interceptions in 79 to match 28 touchdowns. And then the year that he had his personal best in 1980. He had 14 interceptions versus 30 touchdowns. Then he had 25 interceptions versus 17 touchdowns. Then eight and four, eight interceptions and four touchdowns. And in his retirement year, 23 interceptions and 26 touchdowns. Yuck. Yuck. All right, so hey, Brian Sype was the best game manager the Browns had. He was good enough to start, but he wasn't good enough to take them anywhere. Well, all the time. Okay. <laughs> now, great game against the Bills, right? Now we put uh, Jeff. Well, wait, I'm going back here because we had Jeff George, an elite quarterback. Mark Wilson. Ugh. Yeah, Mark Wilson made Steve Collins sick. The mention of him and the drive was close. Are Bernie Kevin Mack fumble? Correct. John Mark says Mark Wilson was is better than Flacco. Donna says Steve Young, yes. And Steve Collins says that Brian Seid was an elite quarterback who never had support. But Steve, take a look at the numbers, man. Prior to 1980, oh, stinko. But I do remember some of the great games against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, in fact, you know, we judging, we're judging the quarterbacks of the 70s versus the passing knowledge we have of the 21st century, which isn't quite fair, I admit. Now, what happened to Barry Lee says, what happened to Vinny after he left the NFL? I'll find that out in a second. And Patrick uh, Blackman says, Sype is known more for that year as the Cardiac Kids. That was a great year. That was a great year. That was. And uh, <laughs> I see this comment that's too funny and bears repeating. Steve Collins says, Mark Wilson, you just made me sick, Octavio. <laughs> Mark 
Mark Wilson sucked. Corvette, how you doing? Corvette says, Mark Wilson sucked. John Mark says, Jamarcus Russell. I got to look at Jamarcus Russell's numbers. Steve Collins says, Jay Schrader. John Mark says, Rusty Hilger. Jeff George. Schrader was another Al Davis experiment. True. It says Octavio. Steve Collins mentions Jeff George. Collins says, Meyer. John Marks chimes in with Todd Marinovich. Well, Octavio Arias says, great game against the Bengals. Did Marinovich get out of jail? Was he in jail recently? Sad story. Marinovich is a sad story, a man I, I, I actually pray for. Octavio says, great game against the Bengals, no leadership. And Collins says, Kerry Collins. Are you related to Kerry Collins, Steve Collins? Hey, good night, Barry. Very strong, man. Very strong. Very strong. Hashtag very strong, everybody. Very strong. Very strong. Very strong, Barry. You got it. I had high hopes for Tom Marinovich, too. I really did. Steve Collins says, Poor Bernie Kosar. Seems like he's punch drunk. Feel for the guy. Patrick M. Buchanan says, Peace, Barry. Ruben Ortiz says, As do I. Very strong. Glad you're back in the game, Barry. Not, not that you're ever out of it. Steve Collins says, No, I'm not related to Kerry Collins. Um, Patrick Blackman points out, It's hard to compare stats due to how the game has changed in sports. Oh, pulling a plug for this place. If you're ever in Beverly Hills, go to Maestro's. Awesome salmon, just saying. Order the salmon with the mashed potatoes and uh, cube in, in ask for collard greens. Uh, no, excuse me, spinach. Spinach, yeah. Now, John Marks asks, wasn't Bernie Kosar's daughter... John, I don't know. <laughs> Google that one for us, will you? You have to remember, I have a, I have a, a broad age category here. There's only so much I can do, my man. So, <laughs> regardless of the lateness of the hour, very strong. Henry Flores says, Brian Sight. Brian Sight, red right, 88 interception, Mike Davis. That's right. That's right. Now, Bruce Gradkowski. Someone asked about the uh, stats for Jamarcus Russell. So, let's check those. The stats for Jamarcus Russell. Jamarcus Russell Raiders. That was easy. And so, you've got a career timeline for him. And they say he moves on from draft bust label, which I do not believe was his fault. Now, they've got the stats here. And uh, career stats in the NFL. Here we go. Jamarcus Russell. All right. He played three glorious years, 2009 and 2000, working back 2007. All right. Oakland Raiders. Total uh, career yardage reads as 4,083 yards. Yeah, I think Jameis Winston has more yards in one season than he does. In fact, he does. Uh, his average was 6 yards. His quarterback rating was a paltry 65.2. 2007, he started at 58.5.9. Went up to 77.1, respectable, and then went down to 50. I blame Lane Kiffin for all of this. I thought drafting was a great idea, but the coach, but the offense, eh, not so much. So there you go. We have touchdowns. He threw, wow, this is horrible. He threw two touchdowns his first year, 13 his second, and went back to three interceptions, four, then eight, and then 11. It's funny. He increased the number of interceptions he threw as he progressed in years through the league. He went backward. He went backward. Again, he went backward. Okay. Now, you've got Henry Flores says, Brian Syke, got that, and Octavio says, Patrick, any relation to Rolando Blackman? Steve Collins says, laugh out loud, John. Steve Collins also says, she starred in the drive. Oh, you guys are talking about that thing, okay. Jordan Yancey says, what about Vince Evans? Oh, Vince Evans! Oh, hold on a second. I'll take... Hold, hold that thought, Jordan. Um, John Mark says, yes. Lexi Silver is Bernie Corsar's daughter. Are you kidding me? Oh, God. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, my God. 
Is that her real name? I just, I'm just wondering, okay? Patrick M. Blackman. No, I'm not related to Rolando Blackman. Laugh out loud, Octavio. And Octavio says, do you know who he was? Yeah. Rick Rice says, will Derek Carr go down as the greatest Raider quarterback of all time? He's on his way. He's on his way. John Mark says, Derek Carr. In terms of stats, unquestionably. In terms of intangibles, mm, he's got to lead us to a Super Bowl, man. If he wants to get in the territory of Ken Stabler and Jim Plunkett, he's got to lead us to a Super Bowl. It's just, I know it's not fair, but that's, hey, that's the way it is. As Octavio says, no rings yet. Henry Ford says, who's the biggest bust for the Raiders? Jamarcus, Rolando McClain, Philip Buchanan, Fabian Washington, or Stafford Rout? You can't put Rolando McClain in that category, Henry, because... Well, Rolando went on to become a star linebacker for the Dallas Cowboys. And he got popped for marijuana, which in California, if he were pop, if he had it in California, you know, the cops would ignore him. But he wasn't in California. So you really can't put him in that category. Again, he had a very successful career with the Dallas Cowboys. And you have to remember, he had a an enormous signing bonus, so financially came out okay. I hope he didn't blow his money. I hope he didn't blow his money. I mean, could he have done better? I'm sure even he would say absolutely. But, hey, on balance, he came out a millionaire. Now, in terms of playing, he did better for the Cowboys than he did with the Raiders, without question. Henry Flores says, uh, I got that one. Rick Rice says, yes, Derek Carr. 831 Scott. Hey, how you doing, 831 Scott? He says, Zinni, do you think Jeff Hostetler was elite? He did win a ring with the Giants and took the Raiders to the playoffs. I, You know what? Let's check what Jeff Hostetler's numbers look like. Let's check that out. Jeff Hostetler. The Hoss. Jeff Hostetler. Jeff Hostetler. All right, Jeff Hostetler, quarterback. Hey, he's 56. Uh, he's 6'3", 215. He's now 56 years old. Born in Ossipee, Pennsylvania. 15 years in the NFL. He has a career rating of 80.5. 94 touchdowns, 71 interceptions. He had... In terms of passer ratings, he was with the, the Redskins and then the Raiders, where for us he threw for 23, 48 yards his first year, that was 1988. He had 23 touchdowns and 14 interceptions, and his overall rating was uh, 83.2. You know what? He has had, for the bulk of his career, with the exception of his first year when he was 56.5, he's had a, he's had a, a rating of it's been in the 80s. Well, excuse me, he had it. Uh, he dropped a 63.2 in 80. So I would place him as a good game manager, who was the kind of quarterback who could have led us to a Super Bowl any of the other teams he was with. But four. So I think Jeff Hostetler is one of those quarterbacks where you say he's almost elite, but four. Because with Hostetler, there's always this but. But he is, Jeff Hostetler is a coach killer. He's a guy good enough to win, but not good enough to get you to the Super Bowl, okay? So you put him in the category of coach killer. Why coach killer? Because again, the coach will say, start that guy. But then he always makes that mistake that causes you to not get to the promised land. There you go. So, there you go. Now, Sarah Kosar is Lexi Starr. What? John Marks is, John Marks is josing on this. That's so funny. Oh, hey, Jacob, how you doing? Patrick, and we're talking quarterbacks. Patrick and Blackman says, Carr needs two Super Bowl titles to be the best rated quarterback. Yep. Rick Rice says, Derek Carr, not right now, but by the end of his career, obviously. And, um, 
I said, uh, Rick Rice says, Patrick, so do you think that will happen? Steve Collins says, Russell is the biggest bust. Yeah, I mean, just, you know, on the stats page, it looks like it. I, again, do not blame him for it. I blame his coaches. Jacob P. agrees with Steve Collins. Henry Ford says the biggest bust of all is Russell as well. John Mark says, sir, oh. <laughs> In going back, I had to run over that comment again. John Mark is obsessed with Bernie Kosar's daughter because she was um, triple X. And I don't mean like triple X, like Vin Diesel triple X. I mean the other kind of triple X. But it, was it triple? But whatever. Uh, Patrick and Blackman, a quarterback that a bust will always be the biggest bust as a player. Ah. Jacob P says, and that was the guy, the way I grew up, watching the Graders with Russell. John Mark says, Russell is a bust, but not as bad as Mark Wilson. Mark Wilson was, he came from that time, Mark, Al Davis thought that, he was in love with his size, Mark Wilson's size, he was from Arizona State, great arm, but in, but he didn't have that, he would have done well in a West Coast offense, he would have done well in a Bill Walsh offense, if he had been trained in the Walsh way of throwing on time in the system, I thought he would have, he would have done exceptionally well, he had it, but he lacked the intangibles to run to successfully run the Raider offense as installed by Al Davis and coached by John Madden and, and Tom Flores uh, just didn't have it in him. But um, Jamarcus, uh, now we've got John Marks has said his piece there and he says he is not obsessed with Lexi. Ha ha ha. He loved Haas. Jabber, how are you? Welcome, Jabber. And Patrick Blackman says, yes, Carl will get two titles. And, uh, and 831 Scott loved the Haas as well. Jabber points to Jason Campbell. J. Russ as well. And, hmm, and Ruben Ortiz says, Russell looked like he was, he ate a box of Baker's dozen donuts before every game. <laughs> this is repeating. Jamarcus Russell says Ruben Ortiz. Looked like he ate a box of Baker's Dozen Donuts before every game. I'm going to repeat that. He's saying, man, you ain't look like you ate a box of Baker's Dozen Donuts before every game, man. You going to take that, man? No. Anyway, <laughs> all right. That's hilarious. Oh, that's absolutely hilarious. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right, folks, it's almost 2 o'clock, and... Um, yeah, I, I'm going to get ready to head out soon. I, I meant, intended to start earlier. I start, I apologize. I had some uh, phone business to take care of, like with people who are, anyway, uh, involved with these different things. John Mark says, my favorite reader, QB, Ken, the snake Stabler forever. Stabler. Now, I remember when Howard Cosell would talk about him. Henry Floyd says, Zinni, what past or current reader would you like to paint the town red? Mine would be Sistrunk, Alzado, Stabler, Villapiano, Hayes, Hendricks, Davidson, Romanoff, Millen, and Upshaw. All right. Uh, I've got an interview with Phil Villapiano. Would you like to see it as a way of answering your question? Uh, so this was in Reno a few years ago. Happened to run into him. All right. Hey, Jabber, how you doing? Uh, I'll, I'll try to... I'll play this video for you since you just got here so you can, you know, we can, uh, um, sure, we can, uh, make sure that you are thoroughly entertained here. One moment, please. I am calling up, ooh, by the way, I forgot to turn off the, uh, iTunes. Sounds like I'm being recorded by something or someone. Maybe I am. Hold on a second. Well, I am being, what am I talking about? I'm on YouTube. Of course I'm being recorded. That's a stupid thing. Anyway, alright, now I'm going to the channel, my channel, to pull up the famous, my famous interview with Phil Villapiano and Conrad Dobler. Conrad, Conrad Dobler. Alright. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, there we go. And uh, I'll get this, we'll get that. So I'll enlarge this. 
Ooh. I have a commercial with Gwen Stefani in it. All right, folks. Phil Villapiano and Conrad Dobler coming up in just a second. Just bear with me while I this commercial's playing through. And uh, I'm going to freeze this right there. And uh, yep, freeze it. And wait a minute. Oh, got it. That tricked me. Hold on a second. That's that tricked me again. Wait a minute. One moment, please. I got a little bit of a uh, technical difficulty regarding being taken to a video I didn't want to be taken to. And no, it had nothing to do with Bernie Kosar's daughter. So knock that off. All right. All right. Here we go. This is it. Take the mute button off. There's the video. Ta da! So it's poor connection. Sorry about that. Mute button is off. Volume. Make sure the volume is up. There. All right. Here we go, Henry. Conrad Dobler of the then St. Louis and now Arizona Cardinals is one of the best offensive linemen in NFL history. Bill Villapiano is a popular Oakland Raiders linebacker and one of the best in NFL history as well. Together, they do autograph sessions around the country. This one for Silver Bowl 43 at a party in Reno. We talked about how the NFL treats retired players. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, two, two legends. First of all, Conrad Dobler. Yeah, and I had just left Tampa, Florida for the uh, Super Bowl 43, and I was with Mike Dick, and we did a thing on Showtime about the Gridiron Greats, and we have an online auction going on right now, folks. Well, you can always go to the online auction. Gridirongreats.org. It's gridirongreats.org. We have a lot of great things to auction off, but you can also get on there and make a donation. You make a donation, we'll get you a t-shirt, a shirt, a lot of different things we got. You're helping out a lot of great players. We've done a lot throughout the communities and stuff. And since the NFL and the Players Association, they don't do their part, we're asking the fans, we know that it's difficult times and stuff, give us a little help in hand while we're beating their butts in court. Phil Villapiano, great Oakland Raider linebacker. Also, what do you think about the matter of how the NFL should take better care of retired players, really? Yeah. Well, I'm very happy to tell you that Three weeks ago, I just got, I just got a brand new knee. Congratulations. I got four of them. My knee is doing pretty good. But I did not know this. No, the NFL did not pay for it. But at least there was a number I could call New York City, and they're going to try and help me out with, like, something. So there is a little bit of money there. And, I mean, it's, well, me, it's, it's crazy. I have paid. I, I'll be going. I have to go back in for my seventh knee replacement. Seven. And, seven. and nobody, I have nobody should nobody should nobody should you know, and, and I have paid more in insurance cost in the twenty five years since I just the co payments and what I've owed the hospitals than I was paid by the NFL in ten years. You know what the other thing that bothers me too, and it came out kind of in court is that your likeness is used on computer games. You guys yeah. see any of that money at all? No, we didn't we didn't get any of it. Uh, uh, in fact, to tell you the truth Players Incorporated, the union, right. takes 69% of the income as a commission. Now, if you have an agent, I have an agent, that took 69% of my income, would he be an agent? No, 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 Gene no, up, no, no. Gene Upshaw made the statement that I could have the best dog food in the world, but if I can't sell it, what good is it? Well, I'm a salesman, Phil's a salesman. And if we had the best product in the world, and the guy couldn't sell it, I guess I'd have to find a new salesman, wouldn't I? I would mean, yeah. think so. Yeah, that, that whole thing was just... Totally mishandled. Gene Upshaw, old friend, old teammate of mine. I can't believe what's happened. I, my son used to say, Dad, I'm you. I'm you. I used to make me happy. He was me on the video games. Did I get a penny? No. But we paid $50, $75 for the game. So anyway, I think it's... Um, I think it, 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 you know, everything's, everything. I, I, was, a, a I was on the lawsuit. Yeah, I, I, say, I helped the lawsuit. Thanks to you and Mike yeah. Dick, that things no. are starting to happen. Well, on the lawsuit, we hit him for $28 million, and uh, we should have hit him for a lot more. And the nice thing about it, uh, you know, maybe maybe Gene Upshaw's in there. Maybe he's with yeah. Kenneth Lay from Enron someplace. Yeah. Right now. <laughs> hey, guys, thanks for your time. I appreciate it. Yeah. So, uh, okay. So there it is, folks. There's, uh, hey, Klecko. That goes not mine. But uh, there you go, folks. There's That was a very impromptu interview that was done. Wow. 
sorry about that. Happy to be walking to the bottom in Reno. And uh, I recognized them, and they, uh, they agreed to the interview. <laughs> that was, uh, yeah. So, hey, thank you, Henry, uh, for, for watching that. Yeah, that was really cool. Um, and... Yeah, that was it was cool, and that was that was a while back. That was what year was that? That was oh my goodness. That was the year. That was when I was using the hard uh, camcorder. Okay, carrying around with me, right? And uh, oh, thank you all, Henry. Thank you, thank you, uh, Henry and John. Yeah, I've got eleven thousand videos, and I've been blessed with uh, the opportunity to interview a number of people in the league and and in life, you know. And again, that just happened. That was they were. Those dudes were lit too. I mean, they were lit. They were like, oh, they were, they were, uh, they were, <laughs> they were. You, you're talking about because this all started with painting the town, right? Those are the guys that you want to paint the town with. <laughs> they were in the process of painting the town. Okay, <laughs> that was great. <laughs> yeah, that was fantastic. Yeah, no, that was that was in John Marks. That that's right. You can bet your last money. It's going to be a stone gas if you hang out with them, honey. That's it. Steve Collins says, Bill Piano is great on the Raiders NFL films. Yeah, he is. And Henry Flores says, Bill, Bill Piano inspired my father when he was in a wheelchair. Oh, wow. Uh, and Henry goes on to explain that Bill gave his ring and made a guy give it back to him once he started to walk again, the guy did. Wow. Hey, thank you, 831 Scott. I appreciate that. Thank you for the thumbs up. Thank you. That, that really made my day. Thank you. I, it's you know, I, I aim to please, so I, I really, I'm, I really am happy when you all enjoy that because that um, it meant a lot. It meant a lot to me that the Lord gave me the opportunity to interview them to tell their stories. I would never have been able to get an interview like that through the NFL Players Association or anything. And did you hear what he said about you know the late Gene Upshaw at the time? Rest in peace. Wow. I mean, I. Tuh. I had no idea. 69% the players' union gets a ton. Oh, it's ridiculous. Now, hey, newsflash. The court battle he's referring to, they won. They did win it. And there's another one coming around. So, yeah. Yeah, Phil's a great guy. He really is a great guy. I mean, un unquestionably great guy. Hey, Jabber, how'd you like that? How'd you like that one? And, uh, hey, Steve Collins says he met... Philip Piano a few times. Seems like a great guy. He said, I almost had him talk, talked into going to a Metallica concert in San Jose with his wife and, with he and his wife. <laughs> yeah, and Conrad Dobler would fit right in with us. I mean, and with the Raiders. He's a Raider. That's right. And Ruben, and yep, uh, John Mark says, Gene Upsaw is a Raider God. And he is. He is. But I don't know about the whole thing about the Players Association and Upsaw with the percentages. That, because I've watched the video before, 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 right? But that's news to me. I'm going to look at that again. Jacob P. says, uh, How fast could you see a court case come off when the Oakland fans are working on it? Let's save that question for tomorrow when Godfather Grizz comes on. It's 2 o'clock. I'm going to sign out, folks. And this has been a fantastic time. And thank you for the, the input. Uh, and thanks for watching my, my Phil Villapiano video interview from the Reno, from the El Dorado. And Conrad Dobler. All right, I'll see you guys um, later. It's two one. What time tomorrow? Oh, eight thirty Pacific, eleven thirty Eastern, with Grizz Jones. He's going to talk about the Raider fan effort uh, and the relocation battle with the Raiders regarding Las Vegas. Okay. So good night, everybody. Thank you, thank you. I try. Thank you all for saying great show. I appreciate that. It means a lot. Thank you, thank you, thank you all. And uh, keep them coming. And thank you for the I appreciate it. I'll have that investment chart by Thursday. Okay. Thank you all. Thanks a lot. See you. Good night. Good night.